The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 7th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? Let's have an extraordinary weekend. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, during this next hour, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. But let them do the walking early, because I'd like to get to your request. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trading up 307 points. The print is 26,028. S&P up 37. NASDAQ up 154. It's mean and green across the board. If you take a look at my, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, you only see three red figures. One for Franco Nevada. It's off 51 pennies. U.S. dollar index down 542 ticks. And the Japanese yen trade out at 10806. Otherwise, it is uh, green across the board. But what does that mean, Jelly? Bean. Great question. Great question out there. So uh, just as we were coming on the air, I was just fiddling around with this chart here. So it's not a well thought out chart. Well, then why the heck am I sharing it with you? Well, the question is, OK, we know, I mean, unless the unless the markets just sell off and I'm looking at the NDX 100 here, that's what we have up on our screen. This is a weekly time frame chart. And it was the NDX that really to a certain extent, got the kibosh, got things really rolling to the downside. What you'll notice as we speak right now, and I suspect that we'll end the week this way, you've got a big old bullish engulfing candle session. They don't happen that often on a weekly time frame. So it shows you the power of this week. So I just posed the question to myself, and I didn't know the answer. When we get those bullish, and I don't trade just on candlesticks alone, as you know that, in the daily time frame, charts, we can see the A to B equals CD to the downside that also had the bullish reversal signal. We don't see that. We, we don't see that on this weekly time frame chart here. But if we just take a look at what to anticipate next week out here, how often does the NASDAQ 100 produce a bullish engulfing candle? And that's the end of it out here. And if we take a look at, uh, come back, the last time we saw one was in July of 2016. Remember, the market has to be an established downtrend in order to be able to generate a engulfing candle. Well, downtrend or uptrend. It's got to be in a specific uh, trend out here. So July uh, in uh, 2016, market moved higher after that. Uh, we saw uh, another bullish engulfing candle in October uh, back in 2014. Market moved higher after that. If we take a look at uh, 2013, market moved higher after that. Uh, if we come out here and we take a look at April 22nd, 2011, market only moved higher for one additional week out there, but still moved higher the following week. And that's really what I was trying to sense uh, in my mind is what's the likely outcome for next week as well. In other words, is this, is this just one big, massive uh, go ahead and sell this rip? Well, you make that decision. If it was the NASDAQ that pulled things to the downside, 
Just take a look at this weekly chart, and I would say caution Will Robinson. In fact, I would say don't do it. If you take a look at this bullish engulfing here in uh, February, just take a look at that move. That was, by the way, that was February in 2010. Come back here to 2009. Of course, the March lows out there, bullish engulfing. Now here, when we were it's truly in that established bear market out there, uh, the week of October 31st, 2008, that was it. That was just a one-week move, and then there was that continued move lower out here. Um, but that's not the market conditions that we're in. So we should anticipate the markets are going to continue to move higher. Now, that lines up. You can see all these other ones. We're already back to 2002. So we're going back 2002 or 2000. 19. You can see we've gone back um, uh, plenty of years to give you a feel. So for those of you thinking of selling this rally, hey, best of luck to you. Maybe you're right out there. I just, and like I say, I haven't. This chart is not necessarily well thought out, although you can kind of see what I was thinking out there. And uh, so um, be cautious. Be cautious. Be cautious. Now the reason I was looking at that. And, you know, I heard Tommy mention it um, maybe bad. I just didn't cut just a few minutes of Basil's uh, show out there. But you do have that spot volatility that's trading above the 50-day exponential moving average at 1636. It is what it is. If we take a look at market breadth out there, I see Fletch uh, typing in or typed in something about the Z Zweig thrust uh, prob uh, pattern. You know, what I haven't done out here, uh, Fletch, is uh, the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline data has been so weak the last couple of days that I didn't update my Zweig thrust charts out there. I'll uh, try to do that during the break. Um, and, and 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 I'll see if I can do that. I won't be able to update the pattern necessarily on my charts, but maybe I can just look at the data. It's just a spreadsheet, and I just need to, to update it. But one of the things that we can see here is we can see that the New York Stock Exchange, uh, its advanced decline oscillator, now well above zero. It closed above zero yesterday. When you close above zero on day one, uh, you're never sure is it bulls or bears or buyers or sellers that are in control of the market because it could just be a false reading. What I mean by that is the following day, the oscillator would get back down below zero. Well, that's not the condition that we're in right now. You're having follow through. So the next over uh, bought condition uh, or condition where we could see some type of uh, turn to the downside would likely be when this advanced decline oscillator gets up to plus 150. So if we put that together with the not well thought out NDX 100 chart, just take a look at bullish engulfing candles on a weekly basis out there, let alone it's a key reversal week as well, I'm noticing a um, pretty good chance that we're going to be moving higher into next week. And maybe it's at that 150 level where we get that failure out here that failure combined with the spot VIX index being above this 50-day exponential moving average, that would say, okay, that's where the counter trend rally uh, could or should fail. But it doesn't appear to be right here at 114 in the afternoon. And as much as you might like to sell this rip, the chart patterns just simply say, don't do it. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's go to a couple of questions that have uh, come in. Uh, the first one came in from Mike uh, yesterday afternoon, and it's with regard to, and Mike, I apologize, I forget your question per se. I can't access it off my uh, phone here, but I was just really looking for, I know you're in a trade on when, and just, uh, I guess, asking the question, you know, what's what, what do the technical patterns look like uh, for me? So here's what we know right now, um, that uh, when is on a day daily basis, that's the left-hand panel of chart is trading in between its profiles out here. And that's between 108.82 at the bottom and 116.33. I, I, I can't recall, but for something is sensing to me that your long uh, win, uh, in order for win to get its mojo back, you need to see it close above that 116.33 level. If, if you can sort of notice, now the center of the box is at 113.33. It's, so it's a bearish structured box, meaning that center line is closer to the top than the bottom. And so sellers really reside between this 113.33 level, which is essence is about the high of the day today, and that 116.33. So Figure, think about this as a football game. We know what the field looks like. That's our chart. And with regard to where the yardage markers are, in order to get another first down out here, Wynn has got to close above 116.33 out there. There's no pattern that I have per se out here. There's no A to B equals CD to the downside that I could draw in. There's no rose momentum indicator bottom. There's no wave count letter G. You did get to letter F, so wave count six. There's 
There's there's no there's there's no there's no TD set up nine count. So I don't have anything out here to say, hey, this is a solid bottom from a pattern standpoint out there. I certainly don't have that on the weekly and the weekly chart as well below the bottom of its profile out there as well as Stevie's red line. So this says careful. We can see the nice bottom out here back in December of 2018, and maybe that's where price is headed back to. You know, from a volume standpoint. This week, you're, you, you've traded lower with 10 million shares. Yes, you're up, but you also traded lower. So 10 million shares. And down at that bottom, you're at about 12 million shares. Um, you're towards the bottom of the monthly profile, Mike, which is down at 100.46. But yeah, so... I, at this stage here, the only thing that I can say with regard to when, with regard to the patterns that I use to help identify tops or bottoms, in this case here a bottom, is that you got a counter trend rally to 116.33, and that's where it should lose its steam. If it closes over that, then at least from a uh, uh, there's more bounce in its step out there, and it's be the 133 level right now, which is the bottom of its uh, weekly profile. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks for writing in. Um, we've got uh, uh, we've got a, a question from Alex. Alex writes in and says, um, uh, "Hey Steve, hey Alex, I bought Apple on Monday at 172. Is it headed back to over 200? So let's go take a look at AAPL is the uh, ticker symbol. And as we take a look at it, let me also uh, get up the three time frame charts out here. So we're going to take a look at daily, weekly, monthly. And daily, you're above the uh, top of the daily profile. So that's good, Alex. On a weekly basis, you're just getting inside its weekly profiles. In other words, it's regaining, it's trying to regain um, old resistance. Uh, so as long as Apple closes above 180, 8765 today, Alex, you're in good shape. And when I say good shape, that would suggest that price would move up to 196.87. Uh, that's the center of the box. Um, that's fairly close to your 200 target. The top of the weekly box is 209.16. I would take this one step at a time out here. Or I believe I would take it one step at a time. If we look to the daily time frame, so unlike Win Resorts, in the case of Apple, we can identify a clear bottom using the tools that you and I use to identify tops and bottoms. What is that? You can see the TD setup nine count, and you can see wave number seven, letter G. So you've got two. So unlike um, when Mike and I were looking at Win Resorts, here what you and I can do is uh, take a look at uh, take a look at just simply the daily chart for the Apple pattern. You can see that rose momentum indicator top. You start doing the wave count to the downside. You get to letter number G. You can also take a look at the Tommy to Mark setup out here. You get to uh, number nine. You get there on the trading session of uh, uh, May 31st. The following day makes another thrust lower, June 3rd. Remember that bottom can form on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine, lining up with wave number seven. Um, so, yeah, I think that this is going to continue to move higher, uh, but I will reserve that, Alex, to making sure that this week you see a close above 187.65. Uh, but it looks pretty good with Apple. Apple likely to continue to move higher. Oops. Wow. How did I do that? I got a solution. Maybe I don't have a solution. Oh, I don't have a solution. Sorry about that, folks. So I somehow deleted that daily time frame chart out there. We'll get the uh, screen back up there. So I'll just reestablish that during the uh, show. But whatever I was going to show you, I was going to say that, look, I believe that today may be day four of that TD setup nine count. So maybe that's what's going to call the top for Apple out there. So hope that helps you out and best of luck with the uh, trade. Hector writes in and he says, uh, Steve, your seasonal chart has been spot on. Great work. And Bev has closed the window from April 5th. Is this baby ready to fly to the moon? Well, I don't know about flying to the moon, but let's go take a look at N Bev out here. And I'd like to use my other, oh, God, I really need to, I'm going to do this. It'll take me just a moment. Let me uh, create a new chart here. New chart, because I really sort of need that. I really sort of need that uh, to to best answer the question. So, and my apology here. I did not mean to delete it, uh, but it should just take another moment here. Zero MP daily without the TAS. So, uh, just going to a template that I've got. And then uh, this should take just another moment. But so we take a look at uh, Hector and Bev out here, you know, price below the weekly profile. 
um, price below the daily. You're getting a nice key reversal session today. But what you and I want to do is see if we can get that key reversal session inside of NBEV to line up with some type of bottoming pattern. And then we can go ahead and give it the all clear fly to the moon uh, type of uh, scenario you're looking for. Now, as we take a look at MBEF, so here we go, we, we really don't have that. We just don't have that out here. So I can't I can't give it the all clear. You know, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside that hasn't completed. This may be the pattern that's under, shoot. This may be the pattern that is underway. Uh, that would say that NBEB could get down to about 362. Um, today, today could be day number eight of the nine count. So, so, so a slight reservation there, Hector. Uh, we do know that um, we do know that anything for any time frame can make a bottom with that TD setup nine count. So, what you would need to see. On Monday would be a close below. I'll give you the level out here. Uh, you would need to see on Monday, in order, for that, in order for today's low to be that low that you're looking for, you would need to see on Monday NBEV close below 484. Today it actually has to close below 476. So uh, that would be a bottoming pattern, and I would give you the all clear, but we won't know until really Monday or Tuesday. So um, we can't give it a moonshot call, but it has some potential. It has some promise. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, hello, hello. You're back. Okay, great. Okay, sorry about that, uh, folks. Uh, we have a slight connection uh, issue, but uh, we seem to have resolved it. So uh, we've got another question here. This coming in from uh, Brendan in uh, Boston. And Brendan uh, wants us to go take a look at uh, Nugget. N-U-G-T. We'll go ahead and put that up on the screen. But, Brendan, what we're going to really do is take a look at the one. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Are we back? I can't, I don't hear anything, so I'm hoping we're back. Okay, we're back. All right, folks, sorry about that. So we're taking a look at the uh, NUGT out here, Nugget, and we're just really talking about how price is above the daily and the weekly profiles, and that is a, a positive. Uh, from the monthly standpoint, uh, this would suggest that price get up to 24.93. But let's really take a look at the GDX. That's the better way, or even the XAU, for you and I to be able to... Oh, cancel this, what the heck, uh, for for you and I to be able to assess what's going on here. So let me get that going on my other charts as well. And really, here's what I want you to focus on and, and pay attention to. Uh, looks like today is going to be day number eight of that uh, TD setup um, uh, nine count. Uh, and as we know, on days eight, nine, or ten, really, bar after nine is when you could see a high. Now, the positive is that price is above its breakdown resistance level. That was right here on April the 12th, and that number was 2254. So that's a nice uh, positive out here. Uh, so on the daily time frame, it says, hey, price should want to continue to move higher. But we can't stop there, Brendan. We've got to at least take a look at the weekly and understand <clears throat> if there's any kind of resistance. And now we see the resistance inside of the uh, GDX. And we can see that price is trying to tackle that level. And where that takes us back to, uh, Brendan, is uh, the week of July 13, 2018. And from that week, that's really where the breakdown, we didn't know at that stage that that's we were, where we were going to see the breakdown. And we consider that to be the breakdown level because of that nine count to the downside, nine consecutive weeks with the close below the close, the prior uh, with the bar four bars earlier. And it sets up a resistance point. We can see how price just squeaked above it slightly the week of February 22nd, but then the following week, March 1st, 2019, uh, it just simply rejected that. So here on the weekly chart for you and for every other person it is trading the mining sector using the GDX or the nugget. Pay attention to the GDX out here. You can see this resistance line. And what you're looking for is a close above that. I think I gave you the price. I want to make sure that I give you the price. That is 22.93. What happens if price doesn't close above that today? Not much. You know that resistance held. Just keep stops in place. Just be cautious because on that weekly chart, that daily chart, you're potentially, and we don't have that, you need, you need two more days. You need today and, and Monday's trade action before we can make a determination whether there's another nine count pattern that is uh, setting up. So as we'll try to, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and integrate this 
in looking at the mining equities into gold and try to understand, you know, what's gold doing. So on a weekly basis, uh, we've taken a look at this, too, and it's dealing with resistance right now. And we don't know the breakdown in gold after it formed this Gertley cell pattern. This is a weekly chart that we're looking at. You can see the Gertley cell pattern. We know that on a weekly basis, gold formed a TD setup nine count. That was the bottom or was the, it was the week following bar nine out there. And now price is trying to get above that breakdown level of, at 13 40, 40. We're five bucks ahead of that level right now, but I don't know where we're going to be come day's end. So what happens if gold closes above and the GDX closes below? Then you've got uh, confusing information. That's all. Uh, but it doesn't mean you exit necessarily because gold could be the leader out here. So, Peter, when I take a look at gold, I just don't know where it's going to end the day. If it closes below 134040, it just tells us that resistance is held. It tells us the sell patterns that were out there are still in play. And it just says tighten your stops on the uh, trades out there uh, in the uh, mining equities. That, that's, uh, you know, and that, that's the, that's, now, doesn't say sell. Right. We, we would do the same thing today that we did yesterday. What, 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 what was that if you weren't here? Well, we took a look at a 30 minute chart and we said before you could possibly say that gold had topped out, you've got to see a level of support in gold fail. And we made it easy. By easy peasy, we just simply gave you the number that gold needed to close below. And what we used was a 30-minute time frame chart. And we used these same resistance and support lines set up by this nine count. And so what we know is, if we take a look, let's just get a crosshair out here. Makes a, uh, Let's get the real crosshair. So right here at uh, 2 in the morning, this is on June 6th. At 2 in the morning, we had those nine consecutive moves up, and that set up that support level, that support level, 1335.30. And what took place out here at 2.30 in the morning? That was this morning. Uh, uh, was that this morning? No, that was yesterday morning. I take that. Yeah, that was this morning, June 7th, uh, the right day. So at 2.30, what did price do? Closed right there at 1335.30. How does that work? Well, I'll tell you how it works. Price comes back to a breakout area. Price came back to the breakout area, 2.33, 3.30. That was all that the traders needed to know, needed to see, and then price has since moved higher. So the cool thing is, is that is a really important level of support. You can't exit any of those trades until you start to see a level of support broken. And for gold on a 30-minute basis, you know the magic number. So I would watch that, too, out there with regard to um, the GDX, the Nugget, uh, gold specifically. Now, in, in taking a look at those lines, the one thing we, we took a look at the chart that I put up for the weekly on the NDX 100, and not to confuse matters out there, but you know, if you're going to ask me what else is it that Stevie is looking for come the end of the day, oh, I've got to get to the right space, workspace out here. Where did I put it? Right there? Yeah, I did. Here's what I'm looking at inside the ES Mini specifically. And it, what you have out here are a number of these resistance zones or breakdown zones. And this was uh, courtesy of the move lower inside the ES Mini, but using the two hour time frame chart. And it, it, I had heard Basil talking about a two hour chart, but I wasn't really paying attention. But if you take a look at this one green line where it has been the blocker of resistance. By the way, that price point out there, I believe it's 2888.25. We see it close above that today. That is a very muy bueno bullish message for 2881 right now. We'll break. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. Uh, Dow's up 296. S&P's up uh, 35. Uh, Tucker in the den wants to take a look at oil, as does uh, Brent in uh, California. So let's go take a look at uh, oil out here. And for, for both you, Brent and uh, Tucker, here's what we know about light Swede crude and uh, what it's done thus far. There's really two completing patterns that took place yesterday. Whoops. One was the A to B equals CD to the downside. And we've got that posted in the den. Yesterday when we were talking about light sweet crude, we were taking a look at the one to two A to B equals CD pattern. We were also taking a look at the uh, TD counts out here. And we noticed that the low that had come in just a couple of days ago was that bar following bar number nine, indicating that that too could be a low. What we needed or what oil needed was a bullish reversal candle. And that's what it generated yesterday. And you're seeing a bit of a follow through out here right now. So Tucker and uh, Brent, what I would say at this stage here with regard to light sweet crude is price wants to go target Stevie's red line. That's at $55.18. That's the next target. If, if price can close above that, then you've got a rising price oscillator below zero, but still a rising price oscillator says that there would be more, should be more of a, uh, more of a move higher. So 55.18 is one level. The second level that we would just go take a look at is where is the top of its new daily profile? Let me get rid of this A to B equals CD to the downside. And coincidentally, it's uh, three pennies away from uh, Stevie's red line. And that number, as you and I know, are going to change. So you got 55.15 is the top of the daily box out here. So the cool thing about light sweet crude is you've got two patterns that have identified a bottom. This bottom is a higher low than the prior bottom back in December of 2016. And uh, if price can close above 55.15, or whatever Stevie's red line will be at that time. It'll be more than 55.15, but maybe it's 55 and a quarter or something along those lines. So a close above both of those would then say that the rally will continue. Now, where can the rally go to? Well, we would just simply come back here just to the daily time frame chart. 
And our initial price target to the upside would be where the breakdown began. And the breakdown, even though it's not the high, but the actual breakdown began on May 22nd. And that level would be uh, 62.78. So if Lightsweet Crew can find its mojo and get above the 55.18-ish range, then you've got quite a move that would be underway, 62 bucks. It's always possible that this is nothing more than just a little counter trend rally. Price will find resistance at both the top of the profile as well as Stevie's red line, deflect lower, and then that that could just mean, hey, price is going to go test the bottom at 51.51, or that rally or counter trend rally is done with, and Lightsweet Crude is getting ready to head even lower. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Lightsweet Crude, and uh, weekly profiles aren't really going to help us, so we will just simply go ahead and ignore uh, that. And uh, you are uh, welcome, uh, Tucker, and I'm sure uh, Brent as well. Let me see if there's any other questions that have come in. Um, and thanks for sending all these questions out there. Always good to get it. Makes the uh, makes me stay focused uh, for the most part. So now I'm totally unfocused. Uh, what is it that we're going to go take a look at? I think I've covered everything out here. And um, so as I gaze at the screen, uh, what should we look at? What what should we look at that would be valuable information for you? And I just don't know what that is. And yet we've got uh, more time left in the show. So let's just go take a look at some uh, issues that are moving inside the market. Let's take, a, let's take a look at Amazon. Let's go see what it has been doing here lately. AMZN is a ticker symbol. It's leading the charge to the upside dollar-wise. Uh, back inside a daily profile. Um, let me go take a look at the other chart system out here, see what we can find for Amazon. So here's a here's a here's a beauty. You got Amazon trading at 17.99, and what it's doing out here. Remember when Stevie's red line or green line? It's both colors. Uh, when it changes colors, and in the case of Amazon, what we know is it uh, changed colors, kind of like a chameleon or a comedian out there, and it did that on May 31st. Now, when that takes place tells us the price oscillator is at zero. It also uh, sends a warning shot across our bar, bow that says you should anticipate that price and that line are going to catch up to each other. And it's really going to be that test that is going to go ahead and communicate to you or I what the real intent of the instrument is. In this case here, the instrument is Amazon. If the intent of Amazon, traders of Amazon, was to say that this was just a counter trend rally, then price should have stopped at 1791.30. Now, I and you don't know where Amazon is going to close at the end of today's session. But if it is above 1791.30, as it is right now at 1799, it's telling you there is more rally left in it. It is as simple as that. More rally, Steve-O, to take you to where? Well, 1849.27 will be the top of the daily profile. I would say that would become the uh, price target. Uh, we do have a, a question in the den. It says, uh, ZN Weekly Chart. Uh, see the three-year weekly chart. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, today's high is the exact test of the uh, 0.618. Do I have a guess about uh, ZN, uh, the 10-year? And so let me see if I can pull that up here. The contract just rolled. I should have it. So let's go take a look at it. So here, when I take a look at the, and I take a look at the daily time frame chart uh, for the 10-year, uh, what we what we know out here. So what this did have, John, in it, the the so-called potential topping signal, was was a TD setup nine count. But today we had a slightly higher high, and so I have to. Uh, discount that and say, no, that wasn't the topping signal that was out here. And so if I just do a uh, count uh, to the upside, um, you know, now it says, well, there's a couple different places to do your counts from. Oh, uh, that says we're only in wave number three. Let me come from here from that D uh, leg. So here's one possibility. So let me just do this so it's not magic out here. Let me, let me, let me change let me just change one tool so that the counts aren't numbers, not digits, but instead they are also uh, letters out here. So here's what I've done. Again, this is this is not 
Basil's work. This is Stevie's work and, and how I do this with regard to renumbering. So if I, I came all the way back to this law on April 17th and we began doing the counts. I see it get to wave number seven out here. Uh, does this on the uh, trading day of May 15th. Now that likely is the place where we should really begin our secondary counts from. And, and that's where uh, I was using the May 21st level, John. And if we do those counts, we're only in, today was uh, count number three, count Dracula, count number three. And as you and I know, and you've got a price above its rising price oscillator, it would say to you and I that this still has further to go to the upside. I could have started my count right here after the fourth wave, and then that would say, well, you're either in wave number seven or wave number three. So, and that's, that's still a valid possibility out here. But not until we would see it close below Stevie's uh, green line out here, would I be able to say that, okay, there was, uh, that that was the seventh wave move and that was the uh, top out there? That's what I see when I take a look at the 10-year. Uh, if we go look at the 30-year out here, you know, in euros, pulling back a bit, um, kind of a uh, uncertainty is what I see when I take a look at the 30-year. We'll be right back. Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page page of TFNN.com and sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so you got the Dow up 289. Let's take a quick peek, see if anyone has uh, written in. And I don't see anything. So what do we want to do? What do we want to do, folks? What is it that uh, somebody's looking at out there? 
I think uh, the market has given us a clue towards something. Uh, something here to watch for. I know everybody's really interested in the precious metals and so forth. I don't know if gold has the same pattern or not. It does not. But uh, if you take a look at silver, um, and we look at uh, silver's uh, short-term top out here, you can see the TD setup nine count. So what that says, we can see that silver is pulling back out here. And so the silver may pull back to support, which is 14.88 uh, out here. That's what I see when I take a look at uh, what high ho silver is uh, doing. And one of our donors spotted the fact that the GDX has turned just slightly uh, red. It's off uh, two pennies out there. But uh, gold's only up uh, 280. So that one's a tough call. It really is a, a a tough call, but no levels of support have been broken, so you can't. Well, you can do whatever you want. I'm just saying it's it's pretty tough to uh, try to suggest uh, you know oh, it's something nefarious out there. Okay, so we do have some questions that are coming in. This is great. Let me make sure I get the first one in. Is the first one out? We use that FIFO system here. This one coming from Richard S. Uh, if I've not discussed. This I noticed the VIX is up and the S and P is up. Yes. What do you think is going on with this combination? I don't know. I do not know the answer to that question. I wish I did. Uh, here's what I, I have seen it before, but I don't recall the meaning, or even if there is a meaning. I would say it just says to be cautious out here. Um, I think Richard, and I'll just restate this. Here's here's what I. Here's what I really uh, think is the likely outcome. Oh, we're going to, oh, we're, the show's over. You have to wait till Monday. Just kidding. The New York Stock Exchange, we have to watch its advanced decline oscillator as it gets to the plus 150 level. You're only at 93 today. It won't happen today. So it's going to be an early next week signal. Let's see where the spot fix six spot fix is when that is taking place. Folks, have a great weekend. Thanks for being here. We'll see you on Marvelous Monday. Take care.